for the first exercise, we will start by lying on the back and then please bend your knees and bring your legs closer towards your chest, but don't pull your legs close to the chest, just have them as relaxed as possible somewhere in front of your belly and let your knees be loose, so don't hold your knees tight, just let your knees hang loose, the feet hang loose and with your hands hold your knees. If that seems like a lot of effort, you could cross your hands with your right hand, hold your left knee, with the left hand, hold the right knee. So that might be easier. And for a test, pull the knees a tiny little bit closer towards your chest. And you might look at the video, it's just a very, very, very small movement like maybe an inch, two inches, five centimeter. Just a very small movement of pulling, just pulling the knees a little bit closer. And when you do that, you can feel your pelvis tilting backwards, like a rolling of the pelvis backwards. So just, just for a test, if that's possible at all, careful and then let go again. And then if that worked, if you, if you felt that little tilt backwards, we take a very short rest. So we are ready for the main exercise, the first exercise, but ready also means we are relaxed. We try to lose tension. We try to lose stress, <laughs> the stress that is bothering us. Okay. And then into the starting position again, bring your knees closer to your belly and hook your left foot over your right so your left heel onto the right dorsum the top part of your right foot and with both hands hold your right knee and let your left knee fall or gently let it drop to the outside to the left and when you do this you might feel you're not in the middle of your pelvis anymore. The weight of your legs is on the left side of your sacrum, to the left of the middle ridge of your spine. Can you feel that? So it's asymmetrical, lopsided <laughs> to the left because of the weight of the left leg hanging to the outside. And in this position, Pull your right knee a little bit closer towards your chest, like before, and then let go again. Just a very small movement. And, and you see, because this is asymmetrical, lopsided on the left side, suddenly you might have a little bit of a more pleasant movement <laughs> or a feeling of warmth or something releasing. Yes, less stress <laughs> in the lower back and the sacrum and you can go slowly, gently. Yes, you can start to enjoy this movement to rock or better roll, yes, roll the pelvis a little bit backwards and let go again. And for variations, bring your left knee closer towards your right one a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. And at some point you will feel that you roll into the center of the pelvis again, onto your sacrum, onto the middle ridge. Or you can hang your left knee to the outside a bit more, again, a bit more, a bit more, a bit less. And depending on how far out your left knee is, the path on which you roll over the left side of your pelvis will be a little bit different. In your mind, you might see zigzag lines, lines up and down parallel to each other, maybe. Yes. So if you do this gentle enough, mindful and careful enough, this might feel quite good already. 
So a lot of release happening. And then we take a break. Extend your legs again. <laughs> or pause the video and continue a little bit. Because it can be quite a delicious little movement. Ain't it? And then we do the same thing on the other side. Bring your knees up over your belly again. This time hook your right heel onto the left dorsum, the left top part of your foot, where the shoelaces are. Knees relaxed, feet relaxed, both hands holding the left knee and the right knee, let it drop to the right, to the outside. And when you do this, and when you let go, you will roll a little bit to the right. The pelvis will roll to the right and you will feel that, that you're leaning more against your right butt cheek. <laughs> the place right next to the sacrum. And then start to pull your... You, we can say pull the left knee closer, but maybe invite the left knee to come closer, an invitation to move and let go again. Come closer a little bit, my left knee, and then let go again. And the tension is melting away. <laughs> and play with how far out you have the right knee. The right knee a little bit closer towards the left. Then you're leaning closer in the center of your spine or the right knee further out. Little zigzag lines. Yes, isn't that wonderful? Take a short rest, relax your legs, relax yourself even further, relax. Come to enjoy being less stressed, to be more at peace. And we continue to the second exercise. In the second exercise, again, bring your legs up and this time extend your legs towards the ceiling a bit or the feet towards the ceiling. So the knees are somewhat extended. At least you should feel your quads working the top side of your thighs. You should feel them contracting and lift your head. And with your hands, you can hold your knees or your Lower legs, don't hook your toes, don't grapple your feet, but keep the legs extended. The legs are up and the hands are up and the head is up. So that's our position. And feel the back. Maybe the hands need to hold the head. Feel your back lengthening while your front side is shortening. And the movement. <laughs> so not strenuous enough, we also need to move and bring your left leg a little bit to the left and your head to the left and your right leg to the left. So we roll a little bit to the left <laughs> and then back again, slowly, slowly and bring your legs a little bit to the right and your arms a little bit to the right and the head a little bit to the right. So you feel you're rolling slowly, slowly and gently to the right and back again. The legs and knees just need to be as far up so you can feel your thighs working. And the head needs to be up so you feel your belly muscles working. And gentle and slow and here also you might feel your whole back is lengthening, there's moments 
where muscles let go, the back becomes softer and longer while you roll in super slow motion from one side to the other. So there's a lot to look at and to observe. How is the foot moving? How is the knee moving? Are the knees, the legs, the hip joints, is there movement in the arms? How much do you move the head to roll from one side? Gently, slowly, maybe with elegance and dignity, of course. And at some point we take a rest again. So this exercise works with reciprocal inhibition. The front side shortens and tightens and the, the back side lengthens and the lower back is part of the back. And the third exercise, we swiftly move to the third and last exercise of today's class. So first the setup of the third exercise. Again, bend your knees and this time stand your feet. Actually, don't stand your feet, but let them hover. Let the feet slightly off the ground. So that requires some belly muscles. And then move your feet. The feet are floating away from the pelvis. So you lengthen your legs with the feet in the air away from the pelvis and feel your pelvis might arch or allow your pelvis to arch because legs heavy, legs moving away from your pelvis and the whole back might arch because of the counterweight from the legs and back again. Of course, if you really tighten your upper body, the Back doesn't arch, but allow. We are looking for this movement of the back to arch in response of the feet moving away, down and away, downwards and away from the pelvis. Yes, do you have this movement of arching? The back arches when both legs move away from the pelvis and the back rounds again when the feet come closer. Okay, so. There was the flight check, <laughs> the setup. This needs to work for the third exercise to work. And then bring both knees again closer to your chest. So that's the starting position. Both legs are up, knees relaxed, feet relaxed. And then think of your left leg and only lengthen your left leg. Do the same movement like we did in the checkup left foot sliding away, only the left one, and then closer, closer again. So we did it with both legs, now only with the left one. And when only the left foot is going down in the way, the back arches, but asymmetrically, lopsided. So how does it arch? How does the arch form? Maybe hold your right knee so the right knee stays close to your belly and the left leg extended extends and there's an arch in your back but asymmetric and in which which direction where is the arch bigger yes of course on the right side your back arches more the pelvis drops toward the left leg because the left leg becomes more heavy So try to find this slowly, slowly, slowly. What do you have to do with the feet, with your right foot? Do you have to have your right foot underneath your left lower leg? Do you have to slide with your left lower leg on your right foot? Or do you have to stand your right foot on the floor? What do you have to do to make this arching of your back, this asymmetrical arching work? Or 
or try it with your right leg. So the right foot is extending far out in the way. The weight is there, the load is there, the mechanics are there. It is happening if you're extending your right leg. And it does work if it worked before with both feet, but now only with one foot. And everything is there. You just need to find it. You need to find how it is to arch the back more on one side. Yes? And once you have the hang of it, you can direct one leg, for example, the right leg, more to the right, then the arch is more on the left. Or the left foot more to the left, then the arch is more on the right. Or a little bit less until you start to have a very detailed feeling, a detailed observation of how your back, your entire back, how it is pulling on your head, on your shoulders, on your spine, in your lower back. How is it with both feet, then it's exactly in the middle, or just a little bit more with the right foot, yes. And the more you practice, of course, the better you get. Hmm? Or you could move your extended leg in a window wiper fashion, half circle, quarter circle, pick up with the left leg, play with your legs and feel your pelvis rolling and arching asymmetrically or symmetrically when you do it symmetrically. But not too much. So that's something to explore, something to remember and to work with and then extend your legs. You should feel active yet at peace. <laughs>